In order for something new to come, something old must go. And that old can sometimes mean let go of what you know until now. Empty the cup and start from the beginning. It's not easy to do, but at the moment it's the only way that I see how something that is blocked can be brought back to movement. You must spill the old tea and pour in new one. Then things look different. Welcome back to Inspire Change with Jordan Mulligan. And today's episode is with your favorite guest, Master Xia Hung Yi. Now this conversation has been under wraps for a long time because we weren't aware that we would be doing more interviews in the future. We have some new interviews coming out with Master Xia Hung Yi in December because I'm going out to Germany to record some more at the Shaolin Temple. So make sure you hit the subscription, hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified of the new content coming out. But this conversation right here has never been seen before. Some small clips from this did some crazy numbers on Instagram. 20 million views, I think, on one of them. Absolutely mind blowing. There's so much wisdom in this conversation, obviously from the great Master Sha Hong Yi. Today's video was as always powered by mulliganbrothers.com. So you can get ready for the end of 2024 with the um, Not A Journals linked down below and also the Memento Mori posters. These posters or life calendars, whatever you want to call them and frames, that's my life right there. It reminds you that one day you will die. Um, it's, it's a humbling experience to accept death. That's the poster when you start and the frame and you fill it in. It's the most humbling experience I've ever had in my life. It was uh, very humbling to understand that one of those squares along there I will not fill in. So I fill this in every week. It absolutely makes me live with passion and purpose. And also the Not A Journals as well. They're on sale right now, so go to the link in the description and get ready for 2024 while stocks last. These, these will go again, as always, before the end of the year, they always sell out. So get them whilst you can. But before that, let's listen to the great Master Xia Hong Yi from the Shaolin Temple Europe. Let's dive into it. So my name is Xia Hong Yi. I'm currently the leading headmaster of the Shaolin Temple Europe which is a Buddhist monastery located in Germany, in the city of Otterberg. And since 1996, where we started the initial idea to, let's say, bring the knowledge that the Shaolin teachings inhabit, to bring this to a wider audience, let's say. We are establishing different possibilities for people to, for example, visit us here in the monastery on the one side, and take part of the daily livings. But at the same time, we have also realized that it's another possibility to share this type of knowledge also part-wise through different channels just like yours. So therefore, people that cannot visit us, they maybe can just already start some type of the thinking processes through these online videos. So we're going to start with, again, a lot of the questions coming through uh, when, we, when we put these polls out. And one of them was a lot of people feeling lost, uh, feeling like they don't have purpose. And I, I guess one of the, the things that I really want to start with then is how does somebody become lost in, in the first place? It might be quite an interesting place to start. How does somebody become lost? I think it's never correct to generalize in a way, because like I initially also said before, you never know where the people are coming from and through what type of circumstances and situations they already went through. So there might be a lot of variables which ultimately lead to the fact why you maybe have been on the path already, but something happened in between some obstacles showed up that make you stagnate, that make you sometimes lose the path. Now, coming from the ancient views and the ancient philosophies, especially now talking about Taoism, there is the term the Tao, which is translated as the way. But this way sometimes is not considered of being the way that 
you are deciding for yourself which one to, to walk, let's say. It is always the combination, in my opinion, in my view. It is the purpose to, on the one side, discover what is in your field of possibilities and at the same time, what is your, let's call it, destiny at the same time. So initially, when we talk with each other the first time already, I mentioned that word karma, meaning that there is something about the outcome of our future, the outcome of our life, dependent on the way how you think, what you think, the way what you talk, how you talk, and what you do, and how you do the things. This is something directly related to your actions, to your personality. But at the same time, I have to call them other forces, which are also interfering and which are also having a huge impact upon the outcome of your efforts. So therefore, the whole approach, once again, is to become more aware of yourself. This is the answer of finding out what is it actually that has made you lose the way. Maybe even you, you never even realized what is the way. And so therefore, the initial point is to take a step back. Especially taking a step back and realizing what is it that you are at the moment surrounded with that all the time from the morning until the evening is maybe interfering with your own with your own thoughts. It's necessary to really be aware are the ideas that you are having about life, are the ideas how you are supposed to develop within this life? Are these ideas really coming from you? Or is it something that you have just grasped from the outside? Because maybe, yes, maybe from the government, from the society, from the advertisements that you are seeing being surrounded with. A lot of people nowadays, I think, are being influenced by that. And the issue here is that you sometimes are just not conscious about it. So in the moment where you are becoming more aware, where you are becoming more conscious about what is actually going on, this is that initial starting point where I would say this opens chances. Because we can only fix a problem. We can only tackle a problem if we know where it is located. And if you are still searching somewhere on the outside to blame someone or to blame any situation or to blame any organization or even to blame the government or whatsoever, as long as you are watching outwards and search for a guilty one, without pointing the finger at yourself. In our understanding, in our way of how we see the things, it is the wrong approach. Because feeling lost, meaning you are feeling lost. It is something inside of yourself that you feel is not in the proper state. It's not the people that you are surrounded with that are feeling lost. It is something that is directly linked with your inner being. So if your inner being needs something to be fixed, you need to make it internally. You need to make it inside of yourself. Of course it can mean that your insight at the moment is still being triggered many times by external circumstances. But that is, exactly, that is exactly the dependency that we want to get rid of. Because as long as your internal being 
is so strong connected to external circumstances, you are not going to find the peace and you will especially not find the proper ways how you are able to, to find your own path. Yesterday we spoke about when you have a, like a mentor or a relationship with a person and they give you that spark in terms of um, inspiration or maybe they could even they t tell you something and it just gives you, you have a feeling, there's a feeling there. With, uh, I think myself and my brothers is with filmmaking and uh, making these videos is it's a very similar feeling to what we feel is our purpose is a very similar feeling. But again, very difficult to articulate to people how, how would you explain to somebody to find their purpose or to find their passion? Like, what is the process? Good. I think it is an, a very, very difficult endeavor, let's say, to try and walk through this lifetime only by yourself. It is something extremely helpful to either have close friends, to have a brotherhood, to have a community, to have people that you are surrounding yourself with, where you are feeling that there is something you have in common, or what we also sometimes call, where there is resonance between you. And sometimes, you meet a person and if you are aware enough and you start your conversations you will feel that maybe the way how that person is behaving the things this person is talking there is something that is resonating with yourself and just by taking this word resonating resonance means there is something getting into the same wavelength something getting in the same swing in the same frequency as what you already are carrying inside. It is similar like why do people have different tastes when it comes to music? Why are there some beats you, you like to hear? And they are like music for your ears. But other type of tracks, they are hard for you. They are more like disturbing maybe for you. And at least my theory and my understanding is that because there is something from the past maybe already that you are carrying inside of you, you are starting to re-remember something. Re-remember that you maybe heard these sounds before, that you were maybe in contact with these type of frequencies before. And so every time when you feel there is something where you quickly come in resonance. It could mean that you are just starting off to re-remember a place where you have been before. You are, so you are just starting to continue from that moment on. On the other side, it doesn't mean that if you are witnessing something and you are not in resonance with it. It also doesn't mean that there is no possibility in there. Because everything that is unknown to you, everything that in the moment is disturbing to you, that is in a way a challenge to you, like we mentioned before, these are also chances. But right now when we are talking about somebody feeling lost, somebody not knowing what is my own path, one way of, let's say, starting a journey is to just start by socializing, start by getting to know different people, talking with the people and figuring out if there's anything during those conversations where you directly feel that is something I'm resonating with. Because if these ideas at the moment don't come from you, that's not a problem. But then 
we need at the moment, at this moment in time, maybe just some additional support from the outside. And all humans are the same. On the one side it's right, on the other side it's not right. All humans are the same and all humans are unique. Somewhere along these humans, there are people you are resonating with. So you are definitely not alone along this path. But to give up and think that there is that you are a lost case, there are no lost cases. Unless you give yourself up, then it is lost. But if you for yourself keep that spark inside of you and just try at least and find someone else that is on the same wavelength. I think that is a chance. Um, when you were speaking then, <coughs> the idea that somewhere that you've been before, are we talking about like generational, like something that's baked into our DNA, that, you know, that's passed on? I, I, I really try to keep in this type of conversations. I try to leave religious content away and I also try to leave all the things away where I cannot really prove it to you. The only thing I can tell you is like my observations, just like we talked before, that there is something being transmitted and transferred from generation to generation, even if it was not our choice in a way, which goes for biological features that we have, but at the same time also goes for knowledge, spiritual development, energetic development. And so when I talk about a place or something where you're resonating with, resonating means something is getting into the same frequency. So in the moment where I'm in a situation and that situation has a certain frequency and I feel I'm getting in resonance with it. What it means for me is there must be something inside of me that already has memorized these patterns of that, of that movement, let's say. So that means I must have been there before. Something about me must have heard, must have felt that type of situation before. And if this is the case, then I cannot tell you if it was from this life, if it was from another experience, but it's out of question that I must have been there before, elsewise it would not suit that example of talking about resonance. It is similar like that word feeling comfortable or when we now just switch maybe a little bit different topic but comfort zone and leaving the comfort zone. I think that we are becoming comfortable with all of the things because we have repetitively already spent time with them. The first time you are experiencing the cold it's uncomfortable. The more you train it, the more you practice it, the more you expose yourself to the cold, I think sooner or later you are getting a little bit more at ease being in the cold. Meanwhile, also to the point where you maybe even feel comfortable outside in the cold. The same is like you're not feeling comfortable speaking in front of an audience, in front of a, uh, a crowd. You practice it, oftentimes you repeat this same pattern and then sooner or later that uh, stage fever maybe disappears and at the same time you're becoming more comfortable. So comfort is very often related to the fact you have already experienced, you have already went through a certain amount of times, this is why you are feeling comfortable in that situation. 
vice versa. What does it now mean if something is making you uncomfortable? You are feeling uncomfortable or you are facing the fact of uh, being uncomfortable. That just means you are reaching a borderline. You are reaching a limit that you until now have not yet crossed often enough. Why do I think it is necessary to cross the lines, to cross your own limits and lines from time to time? Because elsewise you will be stuck in your own limited view of what you have experienced already. If you are living a comfortable life, it only means you are continuously staying inside a field of what you know already, either from this life or you just have not proceeded yet from, let's say, past generations. So every time you are crossing that line, every time you are expanding that border, you are expanding that limit. For me this means there is some growth, there is some there is some new discovery because what you are doing is you are bringing light into a space that before that time was a space of uncertainty. It's uncomfortable because you don't know the outcome of what is going to happen if you cross that line. That's why it's uncertain. That's why people are afraid of uncertainty. But there is only one way to find out and make uncertainty become knowledge. And that one is through experiencing it. After you do it, then you know. People ask me in the, in the type of trainings, yeah, so for what should I now stand half an hour in that position? What is it good for? Why should I breathe like this? Why should I breathe like that? Why is the, why is the finger positions like this? Why is it like this? Why are there so many different things? You just can't explain it by words. Somewhere these words are hitting a barrier. And that barrier can only be broken in the moment where the knowledge, the intellectual knowledge, starts to transform into action. And that action is going to bring you the answer. And this answer is what in our tradition we really refer as that is knowledge now or sometimes we call it wisdom. It is that type of knowledge that came because of your own discoveries. That is the real knowledge. The knowledge about that your teacher, a friend, somebody is telling you that you know up here. That's like the intellectual knowledge, the pre-knowledge, the type of knowledge that now, first of all, needs to transform into action. Action transforms into experience. And experience gives you what you need in order to move on. Um, when you're talking about sort of the influence of other people and that, that knowledge and we spoke again about it being a spark for some people like it, it's like a switch it like flicks for some people but when we were talking about how not to how to stay on the path or how to not get lost you said that they need to keep that spark alive inside themselves um, how how do they keep the spark alive if, if there's no external, how do they do that? It is a method that we call once you feel that spark. That spark or that small fire now needs to be nourished. Nourished in order for it to grow. 
and yeah maybe it fits quite well i had that one tedx talk it was the first one the five hindrances and those five hindrances are actually describing the mental states that in a way are making it difficult for you to move on let's say and I think it fits very well now also with that spark and one of these things is if you are self questioning your, yourself too often if you are filled with too much doubt all the time that is definitely one of these hindrances that is going to diminish that fire again once the fire is going, the fire is going. So stop investing your thoughts. Stop rethinking about why, why it would not work. Don't stop the fire before it even started really growing. Yeah? And this is that. This is the state of you need to get out of that self-questioning. You need to learn to sometimes really have confidence in the power of your thoughts. Once it's in the mind already. Everything can become possible if you find the way to translate what is in the mind into action. Because this transformation makes things come to earth. Everything we have available nowadays on this earth started somewhere here by someone. It started here and then it ended here. Meaning there were some actions merged together with what was on the mind to bring it here visible for others and also visible for yourself in front of you, not just inside of you. And therefore, number one to really avoid is self-questioning and having too much doubts about yourself. And the other four hindrances, let's say, is also um, easily expressed. Don't get caught and carried away too much by positive emotions which meaning which means you feel that spark and out of whatever reason you have now something that is catching your attention which makes you lose the focus of the spark because there is just something which giving you too much of a positive feeling don't get lost don't get lost and drift apart. Don't lose your sight. At the moment we are talking about you want that spark to, to, to grow more. So that means you want something to grow, you need energy to get there. Energy is being directed by the intensity and the depth of your intention. So that means your intention, your focus, your concentration, your efforts, your meditation, your action, your complete way of life, your talking and your thinking should be related to making that small spark grow. And this can only be done by learning really to focus the mind. Don't distract by positive emotions. Don't get distracted by negative emotions. And because all of this has something to do with investing effort, effort means you need to do something. You need to bring it out. It's not about passively waiting. There are areas in this life where you are like a passive driver. You are sitting at the back seat, somebody is driving and yeah, you can enjoy the view. 
But in this case, when you want to make that fire grow, you need to become the driver. This time it's switching. You're not at the back seat. You must be the one directing the thoughts, directing the actions, directing the energy. And that means that that third hindrance, for example, we call it, it is that uh, sloth and torpor, it's called. It's like you are like heavy, mind heavy, body heavy, no motivation. That must go. You want to make that fire grow, these things must go. Yeah. And okay, now how to make something like this grow? It starts with sometimes really simple things off. Instead of lying the bed in the bed the whole day, stand up. Instead of staying in your room the whole day, go outside in the air. Instead of just walking slowly through the park, start running through the park. Instead of running through the park, put some jumps in, put some more intensity in. So what it means is step by step, do something that you get out of the heaviness. Because it's not going to come flying. And of course you cannot expect someone to make a huge leap from one day to another. But this is why there are steps. This is why sometimes time is also on your side. Step by step. Continuity. Trust in the process. And trust in the universe or trust in the words. Why I'm telling you this? Because sometimes it's just the action merged with the right intention which is going to bring the difference. But as long as that first spark is not there, it's difficult to make something grow if there is not that initial spark. And that one must be initiated by oneself. Sorry to take a break from the interview, but I have to mention today is powered by mulliganbrothers.com. The link is in the description where you can get the not a journals, the success journals that actually lead to success and the Memento Mori posters, the poster that reminds you you're going to die. Accepting death is one of the most important things, in my opinion, to understand how to live with passion and purpose. Time isn't gonna last forever, and one day you don't wanna wake up and regret that you've thought that it would. It's not, there's a square on there, that's my life right there. There's a square on there that I will not fill in, and trust me, there's no way you can wake up and stare at that without living with passion and purpose. It's linked down below, it is on sale right now for the end of year, so get them whilst they are in stock, and also you can get the Inspire Change t-shirts and the hoodies linked down below to help support this. But before that, let's listen to Master Shahongi. Being at the temple, um, there's a lot of physical training that happens. And I think for a lot of people who are lost, it, it's, it goes hand in hand with the idea of sitting in the bed all day, not going outside, um, not, not getting physical exercise, not have it, gaining physical strength and becoming weaker. And yeah, how do you find strength when, when you are weak? Okay, well, maybe I really have to say that I do think that this society nowadays suffers a lot also from a lot of mental issues, let's say. Yeah? So the mental states are quite devastating, I have to say. Nevertheless, I can really only speak from the experience that I have. I'm not a psychologist. So that means sometimes only like trying to fix mental problems I don't know. What I know is that we have many, many people that either came here to our monastery or people that are sending us the feedbacks after they are doing some type of those Shaolin trainings that we are offering. And the only thing I can tell is that in the moment where more movement, physical movement, physical engagement, starts to be integrated into the daily life. 
something about the way how you look at the world is changing something about the way how you feel about waking up and what is going to be in front of you is changing and this is why that approach that we are having right now is quite simple if you are out there and you're feeling lost and you do not have any other idea right now what to do I can only suggest you to look for everything that is available out there and just force yourself at least for one week you don't need to commit for 30 days but make it at least for one week instead of one week doing nothing try out every day a one hour session that is available out there because elsewise I don't know I cannot suggest you to take any medicaments medicals I don't know who you should go out and search for to talk to these things may become afterwards but something that is directly in your hands right now especially if you have the chance to see that video right now it means to you have access to the internet so that means the next search would be look for a practical session involving learning how to breathe and learning how to increase your body awareness that would be right now the easiest treatment the easiest initiation to get something moving yeah i think one thing i've always noticed with people who were in a slump or in a darker place getting outside into nature um yeah get getting fresh air and exercise always was a huge benefit to them it, it never went wrong it, you know it, it never created any harm um i think one of the things that when someone's in that position their self-confidence is at a very low point and i think that can create like a, a really bad cycle to constantly go through how would you suggest somebody becomes confident in, confident in themselves? Yes. You talked about uh, the circle or the spiral. And that is exactly, uh, it's a nice picture. If every day you wake up and you are continuously encouraging yourself that your situation that you're in is the right one because maybe there are so many reasons some people feel they are misunderstood by everyone people feel that they don't have a place in in this world other people feel that they are being discriminated there are plenty of reasons why you feel that you do not belong to let's say this society the more you are talking and thinking in these terms what's going to happen is that you're just creating more and more distance so that spiral starts to move in one direction But what goes for the spiral downwards also goes for the spiral upwards. And that means that it's not just that movement that I can suggest for someone to try out. But it is also to find out the small little details and the small little moments where they feel a type of belongingness again. The belongingness to something. And that's why I'm saying either you find some individuals that are out there that share your views and encourage both of you at the same time. If you feel like you don't belong to the humanity, it's no problem. You might just 
start by looking out and get in nature with animals. As ridiculous as it sounds maybe. But some people feel more connected to animals than they feel being connected to humans. Because the way our animals and humans sometimes interact is not by words. Words that can be misunderstood. Because your definition of a word and my definition of a word sometimes can be quite different. But interacting with other beings that do not share the same language is a different one. That one is taking base sometimes on behalf of, yes, your expression, your expression beyond words, which means how you feel towards something. And therefore, I also think that this is maybe a way also to get people back from that track, back from the darkness. If you feel like you're not connected to a certain part of beings, no, no problem. There are more beings in this world. Yes, but the main idea should really be step by step, get back and connect yourself again. First, connect to yourself. Then connect maybe with another being then connect within the group and afterwards into a community and then this is the way how to get back on track. And while all of this process is happening, the confidence is starting to also return back. Um, we spoke about physical routine. I'm, I know a lot of people are interested in what does your physical like daily routine look like? So. My daily physical routine is either, it depends also what time of the year we have. Normally summertime, it means waking up and first of all going for a run. Going for a run for the purpose of cleaning out your lungs and getting a lot of fresh air right in the beginning of the day into the body. Now from the traditional Chinese medicine or the view of the transition phases. We also regard the morning, meaning until, until noon. We are regarding that this is a certain time frame that is dominated, let's say, by rising young energy, by rising energy, which means that is exactly the point of time where you are supposed to, to come out yeah, to, to make, to do the, the work that takes a lot of effort from you, let's say, until noon. So, and this is why after the morning training, after the morning run, first of all, we have also our breakfast, because after the breakfast starts the first high intensity training. High intensity training can mean that the exercises I showed you with the practicing of the rings, that would be one of them. So you make several repetitions from this type of exercise. Or also, I have my personal regimen at the moment of having the hardening exercises also in the morning. And so around 11, 12 o'clock, we are normally finished with the first section. Then we're starting with preparing the lunch. One o'clock it's lunchtime and followed up by a short break. And afterwards we have the afternoon training where I either practice again my forms, do some stretching or do also some standing exercises. Yeah, but maybe, uh, maybe it's, it would be a good idea to have a bid you in the future to really talk a little bit about what type of different exercises are actually existing in this field of let's say um, Shaolin Kung Fu because it's it's so much that even for me just like doing the hardening already like two hours of the day are gone 
if then standing practices come together. If I just choose two positions, then already half an hour already is gone again. For me personally, I have at the moment around eight or nine continuous forms that I practice. If every form just takes two minutes and I practice each of them five times, it's already again one hour gone. So there are so many different areas that you can develop yourself in that one day is gone very quickly. And that also means at the same time that the longer you are staying in this field of Shaolin arts, the more methods you are starting to discover. You are gaining more knowledge, you are gaining more methods, but at the same time you feel like you don't have enough time to even practice all of this. And this is where now my understanding goes that there is the saying, it is impossible to master Kung Fu in one lifetime. I can understand somehow where this idea is coming from. And what does it mean, mastering Kung Fu? And there one, one teacher used to say, practicing Kung Fu is life. And life is Kung Fu. So if you master Kung Fu, it means it's mastering life. It means you are mastering to take life into your own hands. In the Kung Fu, you are responsible to build up yourself as a Kung Fu master. Kung Fu master, master of life. Mastering your own life. This is what all of this is about. And sometimes one lifetime is not enough to get all the tools in order for you to know how to fix everything that this life is throwing at you. And this is again where then the idea comes from that every lifetime we need to use in order to make us grow, in order for us to learn something new within this lifetime. Because if you believe in it or not, just assuming it would be like this, the knowledge you are gaining in this life period, you're gonna get as a new nice package for the next time you come back. Which means you don't wanna waste that lifetime right now doing unnecessary stuff that does not bring you forward. Why not? Because in case you come back, you're gonna face the same issues again that you did not solve in this lifetime. And please excuse if this is maybe something not everybody can relate to because they think it is something you need to believe in. You don't need to believe in. You just ask yourself if that would be a way of thinking, would it make sense? And from there you start. I, I think the, the only downside to that anyway is learning in this lifetime the, you know, these amazing things anyway. Like it would be a waste to not, but the, the idea of it carrying over into the next lifetime or as we've spoken about quite a few times is if it does bake into your DNA, if it is, if it is passed through generations, you're handing it off to somebody else anyway, these, these things. Um, just, I, obviously we can't, we haven't got enough time to cover all the exercises and, and we, I would love to come back and do something maybe in the summertime about, you know, maybe follow you around for the day and see your training processes. But the, I've seen a lot in the temple and we, we practice it and you demonstrated it yesterday, the hardening and uh, the building of the resilience in the body, which I think if you do that now, you probably don't arrive at these darker times as easy, or when you do arrive at these darker times, you're more resilient to them. But yet, 
the hardening exercises, I mean, as a metaphor, I think work, but what physically, I've seen some of the stuff you do here, like, could you describe what that is? Like, what, what are you striking? What are you hitting? How are you putting your body through these hardening exercises? In the Buddhist teachings, we have a saying, the first arrow always hits. That first arrow always hits means there are certain things, like sometimes words or an insult. Somebody is insulting you, it's gonna hurt. You're gonna feel that it's like just hit your ego, for example. The same goes for the physical exercise. In the moment, I hit whatever material that is. I feel the pain. It's not like, it's important to understand, it's not that something is numb. It's not that like uh, I don't feel any, any sensation anymore. I feel the pain. I feel the insult. But what now the Buddhist teachings say is, make sure the second arrow doesn't hit. And the second arrow is the one that oftentimes you are shooting at yourself. Because after the first one hit, you are crying about being hit. And that means if I feel the pain and I try to, let's say, avoid that pain or I suffer because of this pain, that is something that directly with my mind I try to avoid. So instead what I do is I realize, I observe, I observe what is this sensation? What is it that I call, that human call pain? What is that sensation? How does it really feel? So, so what is it? Is it sharp? Is it dumb? Where exactly is it? Where is the starting point from it? How much does it radiate? And so by observing this, I can detect I can feel that there is something collecting, let's say, around that area or even trying to collect and condensate in the mind. And then you learn to release. Even if this is loud, but during the exercises, I feel the pain, I release it. What starts to tense up I use my mind to do the opposite. What, what starts to cut into the ego, I directly make the opposite of releasing it. And it is this inter interplay. Something comes, you release it. Something comes, you release it. More of it comes, you need to learn to release deeper. So that means the more you practice, the deeper your level of relaxation, the deeper the level of your ability of letting go becomes. And then it will always be just like, it's like an interplay. The pain is there and you release. Pain level number one, you can release. Then comes pain level number two. In the beginning, it's still difficult, it's still difficult, but you learn, you learn, you repeat your, your releasing. And then suddenly you realize, okay, now my ability has become um, good enough that even pain level two is released. Then comes number three, why? Because you start to hit harder or you start to hit more often. And so this is also like in that process, the step-by-step -step approach, let's say, to get used to it. And like I said, once you went over a certain limitation, that limit is done. That same pain doesn't come anymore. You went over it. You have overcome it. And in, if people are insulting you, 
for this type of translation now. You learn to not let it attack or even move your ego. In the beginning it's hard, but future insults you will just feel they don't move you. Because you already have the ability to release. And why would you ever let somebody else take away your life quality just by insulting you? That is exactly what, what this is about. If you do not take charge about your own internal way of cultivation, there is too much out there that can feel like an insult. But none of that is worse that you are like wasting your lifetime for it, feeling bad about it. Yeah. Oh, we spoke about sort of more the, the physical side of things and the, um, it all connects to the mental side of things, but it's, it's a lot more of maybe the aggressive side of it. But then on, on the other side of it, we've got the meditation and mindfulness. And like t for people who are lost, that's the, something they need to cover. It's something that they need to, to find as well. Um, yeah, just, I mean, f for yourself, like how does it impact your day-to-day -day life and how can it help people? It's exactly this combination of physicality, which in our case even is the martial arts which means it is the active creation of a lot of what we call fire energy. A lot of sometimes also partly aggression, but aggression that you are calling out from yourself. The inner fire. Maybe some people don't like that word aggression, then just replace it by the word very, very high intensity of intention. If you have that very high level of focus and very much driven by pushing yourself. At the same time we also need to recreate the balance and this is being done by sometimes having number one just meditative practices where it's not about high intensity of focusing there is nothing that you are trying to push. There is something that you are trying to release. Release what's on the mind. What we call, it's a meditation. Get him absorbed. Just get rid of your own personal ideas and just get in touch again with sometimes what people call is the flow, if you like. You are getting back into observation state. Because in the training, there you are not always in observation state only. There is something you want to achieve. So that means you see a goal in front of your eyes. You see something that why with all of this training you want to go through. And therefore, to balance this out, we have the physicality of ourselves at the same time merged with the mental exercises. And besides those two, a third one that maybe we have not covered yet, but which at a later point of time is called, it's also about developing your ethical conduct. So ultimately it is those three areas that within the Shaolin Temple are starting to come together. It's the physical training and education of yourself balanced out with the meditative and mental exercises that we are having underlined by learning more and cultivating your character on behalf of some ethical conduct that are derived by all the theoretical teachings like mainly the Buddhist teaching. 
I think we're going to take everything from this and wrap it up. So when we were with somebody who has lost, um, we spoke about how to pull them out of that. Uh, but the, the, the end thing is eventually for them to rise, for them to, to, to be the best version of themselves. How would you, I know there's so many aspects and facets to this, but how would you describe somebody becoming the best version of themselves? Okay. Let me be realistic also on this one. If there is someone right now feeling lost, there is the chance in this lifetime to still bring out the very best version of that person. Yeah, There is the possibility. But like I also said, Kung Fu is not mastered in one lifetime. What it means is, the biggest mistake a person can do right now, no matter in which situation you are, is to give up. You might not reach the best, best version of yourself in this lifetime, but a better one than you are right now. The main point is to find something that you are not standing still where you are right now. At least prepare yourself slowly, step by step, to get out of that hole right now. And I think there are so many different approaches also out there. I can only tell you the one that is working for us over here. But you have other people that you have also talked to in the past. I think if there is something in common when it comes to people that are not living in these holes, there's a reason why you are not in that hole. Because you have figured out another way of how dealing with this world your view has become already a little bit more clear of how, about how things are functioning here. And as long as you are blaming others, this is the number one. This is the number one step to shift the view. Nobody else at the moment has the power to change you unless you have that initial spark and say, I must do something. I don't want this anymore. Because if somebody is still sitting there and says, no, I want it like this, it doesn't matter how many videos that person is like um, watching or how many exercises that, per uh, that piece, uh, person is doing. In order for something new to come, something old must go. And that old can sometimes mean let go of what you know until now. Empty the cup and start from the beginning. It's not easy to do, but at the moment it's the only way that I see how something that is blocked can be brought back to movement. You must spill the old tea and pour in new one. Then things look different. Thank you as always for today. Um, I do want to mention as well, like a lot of the resources and the things that we're talking about today are available on Shaolin.online um, across Instagram, the YouTube resources. There's loads of places to find all of this stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you for welcoming the team to the temple. Uh, we, we appreciate being here. Thank you again for uh, joining us. Welcome.
Thank you to Master Shahangi and the Shaolin Temple Europe for doing this. You can find out more resources from Master Shahangi at shaolin.online. And yes, we are flying back out to Master Shahangi to record some more episodes. So please hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. We have one more unseen interview that is due to come out before the new content comes out. So stay following, subscribed and watching and all that kind of good stuff. Today's video, as always, was made possible at mulliganbrothers.com. You can get the Memento Mori posters. These are posters that remind you that your time is precious. That's them behind me. That's one that you would receive. You fill it in and it should look like something like that, depending on your age. And it's a constant reminder that your time is precious and that you must with, live with passion and purpose and love for everybody else. I love these, it changed my life. And also the Not A Journals are on sale. Everything's on sale on the website right now for the end of 2024, the start of 2024, linked down below. I wanna say a massive thank you to everybody who supported us this year, who subscribed and hit the notification bell um, and just stay tuned. We have some incredible projects come in for 2024. And a lot of you guys didn't know that we were working on a feature length documentary for the last three years. So our attention has been on that. We've just finished editing it. So now the whole team, all of us are on this YouTube channel and the projects that we create here. The, the amount of documentaries that we have come in, the inspiring people that we have come in is gonna be insane. So thank you, stay tuned. Thank you for supporting us through this period where we were struggling to balance our time and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Have a blessed and productive day. Peace.